Our project has two pathways. For this presentation, we are showing the work of the second pathway. We have made a 45-minute documentary video entitled A Creative God, The Visual Arts and Worship, that explores how six congregations with worshipers from two or more cultural backgrounds use visual art and other visual elements in their worship places. This resource and a discussion guide will be posted on the Together in Worship website, which has a growing collection of curated and free online resources by Anabaptist writers, artists, videographers, and musicians. The video documentary project team included three MDiv students from Anabaptist Mennonite Biblical Seminary and three undergraduate visual communication students from Eastern Mennonite University. Our grant budgets allowed us to work with congregations in a 100 to 200 mile radius of Harrisonburg, Virginia, where EMU is located. We held a Zoom interview with a seventh congregation that has imagined and supported an art gallery space in their church building for several years. We are using brief representative video clips as examples of our key learnings. The visual art and visual elements of congregational life are tangible, engaged with the body in some way, and create a shared, storied place. Something that I think um, is still important to us is creating that visual element. And for me, something that the visual does um, in a different way that the music or that the spoken word offers is to, to really create that space. And to me, it sets the environment for us to be in and dwell in. And sometimes we use artwork as, as a centerpiece and we focus on it and we discuss it. But most of the time, it is simply there. And um, what I have been amazed by is that even though it might not be referred to, it might not be spoken to during the course of a service, it's still very present. And that probably more than the spoken words that I might share in a worship service, I get more responses to the artwork or the, the ways that the visuals are, are shaped for that Sunday. For me as a person of color, as a woman of color, I think that it's one thing important to be authentic, to have authentic worship space that is representing the people that are here, to also have people who have ownership and voice for uh, people to create, and then for myself to see people that look like me, and to see people that are um, part of the community, part of the vision, part of the mission, that also represent communities, um, communities of color, BIPOC communities. Images, symbols, and colors significant for each culture communicate a feeling of respect and belonging. The flags do have meaning. The color pink is a color of love, and the, the color purple it just means royalty. And the blue one to us, it means the Holy Spirit and the move of the Holy Spirit. So sometimes when we are worshiping and we are listening to a song that is saying, um, you know, or proclaiming how great is our God and that He is King and He is Lord, when we are using those flags and, and it has the color, is it color purple, um, we are just declaring it or claiming it. Because sometimes uh, English is, is not our uh, uh, mother's, mother's, mother's language, right? So it's not easy to, to speak in fluently in English. So with the visual, it helps. It helps more because it, maybe the, the word is different, but the visual can, can do more better, yeah. People on the edges of the church have opportunities to contribute to the worship life of the congregation. 
I think art is part of the human experience and anything that's part of the human experience should be in the church. Everyone has a place to um, belong in the church and art is part of that, I think. The art piece that came out of me came from a program that we did in the church when I first started and they was telling me how gifted I am in creating in, in the art field and they gave me this job when I started attending the church to decorate and you know the belief they had in me that I did not see in myself was priceless. Congregational art projects provide means for building relationships among congregational participants and create artwork that can be contemplated, helping congregations see who they are and what they are becoming. If we're in a congregation kind of overflowing with artistic expression and ability and interests, what are the what are the many ways we can kind of bring that to the forefront in the building? So that was an important piece to me. And I think the gallery really kind of grew out of those sensibilities. We have so often relegated this to something that like either a certain group of artistic people in the congregation do, or that we hire professionals who somehow we think have magical artistic gifts to do. And for me, finding ways to create art with folks who don't think of themselves as artistic people was incredibly meaningful and powerful. And I think for them was too. Congregational practices are enhanced, enriched, and changed through the presence and use of familiar images and artifacts from cultures represented in the congregation. Uh, I think one of our, our pieces is uh, different colored people, different clothing, outfits, like in a circle, representing kind of unity, representing uh, difference, but also representing that we're a global body of Christ. Um, and so people can visually see that, right? Like at Whitehall, we're, we're blessed with having people of different nationalities and ethnicities, different languages, different cultures. Um, and so we can see that as we're worshiping and singing together in our sanctuary, but it's also a visual up front that people can say, oh yes, this is what it means to be the body of Christ globally. Within congregations, we discovered that the visual arts create a pathway to God. So I think often about what art brings to the worship space. And I think back over our history, we've been so focused on the auditory part of worship. You listen to the preacher, the sermon is the central part of a worship service. But we, especially as Mennonites, are discovering the the power of bringing our attention alongside the presence of God by using our bodies and by using our eyes, our hands, and the worship can be, um, the worship can blossom by use of more of our senses. And I think that's what art is bringing to us. Two questions emerge from our work that call for more exploration. How can Anabaptist Mennonite congregations utilize visual arts and the visual elements of worship to create spaces of identity, respect, and belonging for all worshipers? And how can visual arts be a resource for Anabaptist Mennonite congregations to imagine ourselves as an intercultural church.